to eat similar and even greater than respecting one's parents. The respect for elders, for Torah scholars, is even greater than one's parents. Why? One's parents bring you to this world. But a, a Torah teacher brings you to the world to come. He's going to save you. <coughs> He's going to save you from Gehenim. So there, there's more respect due to a Torah scholar who's teaching you, influences you to become a better person and to do tshuva and etc. To, to make it in life as a Tashem. So this is the mitzvah of the Hadarta Pnei Zekin. So the Gemara replaces. Huh? The Gemara replaces. The front seat says, coach it, coach that. Hadarta Pnei Zekin. Yeah. 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 You're saying it's on the buses. On the buses, the first seat. Ah, ah, the first seat. 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 To respect him. You might say, why? If he forgot his Torah study, I'm, I'm, not getting, I'm not gaining any teachings from him, any benefit from him. Why should I respect him? That's it. He didn't finish the job. He, I respect like a regular person. But why that extra respect that the Gemara is saying that even if he forgot, Zaket Shashachachtam, you know, an elder that forgot his Torah teachings, you still have to respect him. Why is that respect needed for an elder who forgot his Torah teachings? So we're going to explain now this with the idea of the, of the clouds and the vapors and this heat. The elder who forgets his Torah teaching, where does this come from, that an elder can forget his Torah study? It comes from what's called Ananin Dim Chasyan al It's a terminology from the Zohar which translates as the clouds, the spiritual clouds, like a blockage which is covering up the eyes of the elder, that he can't see clearly his eyes of wisdom, his Eni HaSechel can't see the ideas of wisdom clearly. There's a cloud blocking his, his, his wisdom. The wisdom's there. The mind, the Torah study is there imprint, in, in, imprinted, impre, impressed on in his brain, in his soul, in his neshama. It's there. But there's like a blockage covering it up. It wasn't like uh, that he forgot. It doesn't mean that it disappeared or was taken out. It's still there. But there's a covering up. There's a cloud, a fog covering up it. And we have to remove it. How can we help this elder to regain and to remember what he lost, what he forgot, not what he lost, but what he forgot? So there's a mitzvah of honoring the elder. What is honor? The honor, when, when we give honor that we spoke about last week, any item, a holy item that requires the honor, the honor of Hashem, it's called the honor of the glory of Hashem. When Hashem wants us to honor a synagogue, to honor a Torah center, to honor tzaddikim, to honor our parents, to honor a separate Torah, to, 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 a separate Torah to, to stand up in front of a Torah school. This is Hashem's honor. It's an extension of Hashem's honor. Hashem wants us. How do we honor Hashem? By honoring what He wants us to honor. To honor the sages, to honor shuls, Torah studies, study halls, Sefer Torah. This is the honor of Hashem. By us honoring the, the elder, this helps to bring back His wisdom. To explain, honor is a verse that explains that honor is like fire. Because when you see glory, you're heated up. In other words, when, when, a, when a king ex displays his glory, and the glory is very intense, so you, you you're not going to sit down and just be in the corner. You're going to respect and honor and respond to the glory being demonstrated. This is like a physical king, all the more so by Hashem. When glory is expressed, so the result is an awakening. An awakening is movement, which is associated with heat. Heat. So kvod, kavod Hashem, holy glory, is connected to heat. Similar to the warm, hot vapors rising up to the cloud. Now, our job is to take this cloud, which is blocking the wisdom of the elder from, from reconnecting to what he knew. We want to remove <coughs> this cloud. So by honoring a sage, we're now bringing, like in, like in the, the science of the clouds, we're bringing warm vapors up to the cloud, which is blocking the elder from seeing what he knows, what, is, what, what he knew and he's forgotten. And by enough honor coming in, the honor will tear open, crack like a thunder, and tear open the, uh, the anan, the cloud, which is blocking his wisdom. And then the elder reconnects 
to his wisdom, and then he gives it over. Wisdom is called water. Like it says in the future, <coughs> The world will be filled with knowledge, just like the waters cover up in the sea, the seas, the oceans, they cover up with water, that, 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 that's endless, there's so much water in the world, and also the depth, like we, we, we saw on, on surface level, any body of water looks straight. But under the sea, oh, oh, there's, there's endless depths and there's movements of, of, of a shallow area, deeper, deeper, deeper. The depths of the wisdom is endless. But with the, Torah, the, the, the prophet is comparing when he says this verse that the world will be filled with wisdom, like water, shows the connection between the element of water and that and wisdom. So thus, by respecting an elder, this crack op cracks open his cloud which is blocking his wisdom from, from, that's causing him to forget it. And thus now the wisdom of the elder is re-revealed and he can now again re-teach his wisdom. So based on this, based on this, the, the reason that an elder forgot his Torah study in the first place is because of a lack of honor. Because if there's a constant influx, a flow of honor to the Torah scholar, not for chas anybody's sake, but for the sake of honoring Hashem. So if there's a, 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 a ceasefire, there's an end, like there's a blockage in the honor coming to the Torah scholar, this causes the scholar to forget. So here you see that a Torah scholar is a lot dependent on the people. In other words, it works both ways. It's not he's just himself and he earned the title. Like what we see by the Torah of Moshe Rabbeinu, that as soon as the Jews did the golden calf, so Hashem told Moshe Rabbeinu, Lech, Red, Hashem commanded Moshe Rabbeinu when on RC night received the tablets, the first tablets, go down, lech red, go descend. We know it's to descend, but the Torah stresses it, go and descend. Instead of telling Moshe Rabbeinu, go to the Jewish people because they've sinned, they've done the golden, flat, the golden calf. So Hashem told them, lech red, go and descend. So Rashi explains this extra word, descend, that Hashem, so to speak, pushed Moshe Rabbeinu he put him, he put him on, on what's called nidui, on expulsion. He expelled him. He said, your whole greatness, Moshe Rabbeinu, is for the Jewish nation. Now that they've sinned, I can't have you up here like this at this high level. Because your high level is because of the Jewish people. I made you Moshe Rabbeinu, the one and only Moshe Rabbeinu, for the sake of Am Yisrael, to take them out of Egypt, to bring them to Eretz Yisrael, to give them the Torah. So now if the Jews have fallen, that what, what, help, what does it help that you're at this high level? You go down also. So we see that the tzaddikim, the Jewish leaders, they're influenced a lot by the, the level of the Jewish people. So the, 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 there's a direct connection between the people and the elders. So going back to what we said, that if there is a, a, a lack of honor towards the Torah scholars, then they begin to forget, yes? Forget Torah that is useful to help us, as opposed to if there is an influx of respect, so everybody gains in the end. The Torah scholar gains and now he remembers his Torah teachings, and the people gain, that they gain these insights which can and will save their lives, change their lives, bring them closer to Hashem. So there's a whole cycle here just like the rain, and the, the Ra'amim, the thunder, that is the awakening, that is the waking up point to get the people to really wake up and to, to understand these teachings. So we see an amazing idea on nature, and now we can find a parallel in the Torah. Now, what this comes mainly to help the, the, the respect given to an elder and then the elder revealing his teachings is that it begins to inspire people to dove in with all their bones. Like the verse says, we say every Shabbat morning in Nishmat, Kal, or Kol, depends how you pronounce it. Kal atzmotai, Kol atzmotai tomarna, all my bones proclaim. That's what King David says in Tehillim. And it's part of the Nishmat prayer that we say, all my bones proclaim to you from Hashem who, who is like you. That's King David's words and we say it every Shabbat morning. That's, he's saying that because that's the goal. The goal of a Jew is to dove in not just from the lips, not just lip service, but that his bones, his essence, his real makeup, which is the bones, is etz, the word etzem in Hebrew is a bone, but it also means an essence, the etzem, etzem adavar, the essence. The essence of a person, of his makeup, believe it or not, is the bones of his physical makeup. And when davening, it should come not just from my lips, but also from my bones. Like the verse says, kolatzmotai, all my bones say. The problem is that when people 
Davin without their bones, that is without concentration, without their heart. So there becomes a distancing, what we spoke about last week, <coughs> the idea of kavod and the nefesh. To recap, and we'll connect it to what we're speaking about tonight, we said that the root of all the souls is honor, the honor of Hashem. That's why in the world, there's a physical reflection of this, that there is a, in, in Hashem instilled in humanity, humanity, whether Jews or non-Jews, a pursuit of honor, of wealth, of power. People want to become somebody in life because that's showing that the root of all creation is kavod, the honor. The thing is now, we have to direct the honor to Hashem, not to ourselves. But the soul, the nefesh, is rooted in the kavod. So now, when a person davens, what is the davening? What is the words coming out of the davening, the concentration? This is the nefesh. That the, the, the soul is in the kavod of the words. And the actual words of praise of Hashem are words of honor. So when a person davens without honor, so the Hashem says, the Prophet says, quoting, on, saying on behalf of Hashem, Bisfatav kibeduni velibo lichak mimeni. And they're, they're davening without a heart. So the Prophet is like rebuking the Jewish people uh, on, on behalf of Hashem. The Prophet is saying on behalf of Hashem, the Jews, they respected me with their lips. Bisfatav kibeduni. They say the words of the prayers. They're saying words, Hashem, you're great, and everything. But we say the davening, Ashrei, the morning prayer, the morning services, we're praising Hashem. Bisfatav kibduni. Hashem says, right? He's saying, they, they honor me with their lips, v'libo, but their heart is far from me. And the heart is the place of the nefesh, believe it or not. That's where the nefesh is located, in the heart. So their hearts are far from me. So, in other words, a person davens with praise without his, without his bones, without his heart, without the nefesh, together with the bones. The bones, by the way, is what connects the... Uh, the nefesh to the kavod is davening with all your force with the bones also. So when that doesn't happen, so there's a distancing between the soul and the honor. What happens when that, hap when that happens is that a person feels drained, tired. When you see people running around, they're complaining, oh, I'm just out of it, I'm tired, I'm drained. On a physical level, it's due to the reflection on the spiritual level that the soul is also drained. What's causing the drainage the weakening of the soul of the nefesh, it's being far from kavod. And the place of the kavod for the soul is expressed in the prayer service. But not just to say the words lip service, like we said, but to have the heart, the nefesh, connected to the words, by saying the words, by feeling the words of the prayer in one's bones. So when a person has a weakening, a physical weakness, and it's a reflection of a spiritual weakness, it's due to the distancing between the kavod and the nefesh. When that happens, people are far from kavod, honor. The result is that people can't properly connect to and utilize kavod, which causes that people don't give the proper kavod to the Torah scholars, because they're far from kavod. People are not giving the proper honor to Torah scholars because they have no connection anymore to what's called holy honor, because the, the nefesh has been distanced due to a lack in the davening. The davening is just dried out. So how to fix all this? This comes about through redirecting by working on, on, on respecting the elders. But now the problem is, if I'm far from kavod, far from honor, how could I be expected to re-honor elders who've forgotten their Torah teachings or they can't help me anymore to get out of my rut? So we explained last week, there is one item that I can do that can reconnect once again the nefesh to bring up the nefesh back to the kavod. This is specifically the mitzvah of tzedakah, like we said last week. We explained last week, if you remember, the tzaddik, and the dalit, and the kuf, and we add to tzedek, which is a blemish, we add the hay to it, the five times that tzedakah is mentioned, the word tzedakah is written in the Bible five times, so we add that hay becomes tzedakah, and by, by tzedakah, we are able to elevate the, the, the soul from being far from kavod which is the verse, Tzedakah Tatsil Mimavit, Tzedakah saves from death, because when a soul is distanced from Kavod, so it, it, can, it, it risks being, it to expire, spiritually and physically. A person risks, God forbid, being far from, for so long from its, its source, which is the Kavod, he can risk losing it altogether. So Tzedakah, and we said specifically, the Tzedakah in the, in the prayer service, of the morning prayer service, when, where there's a, a mitzvah, there's an inyan, a concept to give, coins 
at the words Ve'ata Moshe Bakol. If you look in your Siddur, even the art school Siddur, in Vayvarech David, <coughs> you stand up, you say Vayvarech David, et Hashem le'ene kol ha'kahal, in the Pesuk in the Zimra, in the verses of praising Hashem, after saying the five Psalms of Hallelujah, Hallelujah, which by the way, those five Psalms of Hallelujah correspond to the five, the five times of Tzedakah. After saying Hallelujah five times, but then we say Baruch Hashem Olam Baruch, and then we say again U Baruch, and then we stand up and say by Baruch David. At the words Vata Moshe Bakol, your senior sitter, it says to give to charity at that point. Giving charity at the same time proclaiming Hashem, you rule over thing, over over, over everything. Vata Moshe Bakol, in a way we're re, we're reconnecting the honor back to its source, back to Hashem. By us doing it, it pulls up our nefesh, that we're reconnected to kavod. Once this is done, then we're able to re-honor, to give again honor to the elders who have forgotten their, their Torah because of us, because of the lack of honor coming to them. So we all lost out, we're dried out. And now by re-giving the honor to the, to the elders, they're able to reveal their da'at, teachings which can re-inspire a soul to reconnect much more stronger to their davening, that the bones can say the words of the davening, right? So all this is hinted to in the verse in Proverbs that says, Shmua Tova Tedashen Etzim. Good news, Shmua Tova is a good, a hearing, a good hearing, something good that you hear will say shape, will, will make moist and make like a very, a very healthy, the word Deshen is it's hard to translate in English. But it means something which is very filling and moist and, and strong. It'll make strong and moist the bones. Shmua tova, good hearing, something good news, will make moist the bones. What is the shmua tova, the good hearing? It's the noise of the lightning, the, the thunder generated by tearing open the cloud. In other words, by respecting, these are deep concepts, I know, but we have to understand these ideas. That by, by respecting the elder, we tear open the cloud, which caused him to forget his wisdom, so to speak. And now the thunder is revealing it, so it's good news. It's Shema Tova. I get to hear now the teachings of the tzaddikim, which is the thunder generated by opening up the cloud. Shema Tova can now moisten, moisten and rejuvenate and strengthen my bones. The Dashen Etzim, that's the verse in Proverbs. So now I can dive in with all my bones. Kal atzmotai tomarna, that the words are not just coming from my lips, not any more lip service, but it's from my bones. The words are coming from my essence, that I'm davening from my depths. I feel, all my body feels the words. I'm totally absorbed in the words. You see some people, they're davening and they're not there. They're walking back and forth. They're just saying the words to get on with it already because it's, a, it's too hard for them. And you have another person who they, they're, they're one with the words. They're literally in the words. You see how they, you see they're saying every word and it's, 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 it's as if it's a part of them. The Baruch, the Ata, the Hashem, it's part of them. That's an, that's an expression that the words are coming from the bones. So this basically is the idea of respecting the elders, Torah wisdom, which then can rejuvenate a person's davening. Because that, that, that caused the blemish the first place, that a person is not able to dove in properly with the soul connected to the honor, the words of honor, because the bones are not in the picture. So it causes a lack of honor. And because there's a lack of honor, there's no honor being directed to the true Torah tzaddikim. And because there's a lack of honor to the true tzaddikim, their wisdom is blocked now. They're clogged. They can't, they can't think, they can't give, and they can't help. They can't help the Jewish people because there's nothing, there's a cloud blocking their wisdom that they can reveal to Amisot to get them back. So tzedakah begins to generate everything to activate all this movement to happen. So that again, the clouds tear open and then the words of the tzaddikim, the thunder is revealed. And this revelation begins to wake up a person that is able, the shmua tova, the thunder makes the bones strengthened again. And the teachings of the tzaddikim re-inspire a person to be able to dove in with all their force. Because the main thing that Judaism is not just to study, right? We know that it's a famous, it's, a, it's coming up in Ethics of Our Fathers. Lo ha-midrash, or ein ha-midrash ha-ikar, el ha -ma The main thing is not the learning, it's the doing, what you do of the learning. This week's per capita was unbelievable. We read chapter 3. Here in Artisua, we read chapter 3 in Chutz Laaretz, Diaspora, 
we're still in chapter 2. In chapter 3 we read that someone whose deeds are greater than his wisdom, what is it compared to the Malgome? To a tree which has a very strong root, is very strongly rooted in the ground, and he has a few branches, but a wind will come and cannot uproot the tree. And because he cannot uproot the tree, there's a future to this tree that will sprout more and more branches and grow. So that's someone whose actions, whose deeds, are greater than their wisdom. But you need both. You can't, just, you can't expect to have deeds in all the Torah. In order to have deeds, you have to know what to do. You have to learn Torah in order to know what to do. However, the thing is that whatever I learn, to immediately put it into action. Okay, what do I get out of this? I learned a beautiful page in the Gemara. I learned a nice chapter in, 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 the, in the Tanakh, in the Bible. What do I get out of it now? What can I do to come closer to Hashem through these teachings? This is someone who's looking to do, to make actions to come out. So this is now the, 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 the action which is greater is especially portrayed in prayer. Because what is prayer? Praying to come to these teachings. Hashem, I want to fulfill this. How? It's through praying now. The greatest action that comes about, comes about through Torah study is praying about it. Prayer which generates, is generated from Torah to fulfill the words of the Torah is, believe it or not, even greater than the Torah itself. Can you believe that? When a person davens, in order to learn Torah, like he said, Hashem, please send me parnasa, send me health, send me a normal life so I can study. So this type of prayer, the Zohar calls is below the Torah, because you're, you're, you're praying for items that can help you to learn Torah. As opposed to somebody, after learning whatever they learned, they now translate, they re-express the words of the Torah into words of prayer. Hashem, help me come to this, what I just learned right now. Help me to do the bits of tzitzit properly. Help me to keep Shabbat properly now. Help me, all the things I learned, help me to come to them. This prayer, believe it or not, is even greater than the Torah study. So like we saw here, that the elder, when his wisdom is revealed, because the clouds have been torn open, and he can see clearly, his wisdom revealed gets people to love him. Because that's the main thing. It's what you do with the wisdom of the Torah. And the main doing, believe it or not, is prayer. It's prayer to come to the prayer, the prayer book. The Gemara says itself, if only a person would dove in all day. In expressing the greatness of prayer, believe it or not, even above Torah study, but this type of, of prayer, where it's generated from the Torah to fulfill the Torah, and that was what you're learning to, to dove in about it, on that the Gemara says, if only a person would dove in all day, to show the greatness of this type of prayer. So now, one more point, like the clouds, when they're torn open, and they begin to let out, to pour out the rain, that the, the clouds pour out the rain commensurate to what that, that land needs. Like a land which needs, there's a lot of farms and there's a lot of vegetation, it needs more rain, so more rain goes there. As opposed to a desert, there's hardly any rain. There's no, there's no need, there's no vegetation, so there's no rain there. So too, this tzaddik, the tzaddikim, when the honor goes up to their cloud, tears, and tears, tears it open and they reveal their wisdom, like we said, that like the Prophet says that the world will be filled with wisdom like the sea. So we say that in, in the sea there's endless levels. It's not on the, on the surface level, it looks the surface, it looks the same, flat. But underneath the sea there's endless levels commensurate to each person's receiving of the Torah. Each person needs or is ready to receive a different level of Torah. And the tzaddikim, when the clouds are opened up, that is the Torah that's revealed to explain. Anyone can open a book. You, you go to a Jewish, Jewish bookstore, you can buy Mishnah, you can buy Gemara, you can buy Halacha books, you can buy all types of Jewish books, and you're learning Torah. Hey, what's the problem? I'm learning. What do I need the Torah scholar for? His, his wisdom is blocked? Okay, Shalom, I don't need him. I don't need him. I have books. I, I, I buy I have all the art school library, all the Feldheim books. I'm okay. I have, what's the name, Rebetzin, John Grice's uh, classes and books. I have this Rabbi Tversky's books. I have all the books I need. I don't need now this whole story of the cloud and all this focus and the, and the glory. I don't need this. What is, leave me alone. I have. Ah, uh, there's a difference. There's a difference between a person who learns Torah from a book and someone who learns Torah from the mouth of a tzaddik. What's the difference? The tzaddikim, they have a, such a power in their revelation of the Torah that you hear exactly what you need. There's two types of people who learn. There's one person who reads a book, okay, I'm reading, I'm reading, I'm learning the Gemara and everything, but it doesn't get to him. He's learning it for the sake of learning Torah. He has to struggle to connect to the words, 
because he has a mitzvah to learn Torah. The poor Torah says, Vagita Boyuma Balayla. I have my daily st st study schedule in Mishnah, in Gemara, in Halacha. I go to this class every week and this. So I make my effort to connect to the words of the Torah. This is learning from a book. And even if I'm receiving from people, I have a fixed class every week, and I make an effort to go to it and to listen, to focus, or cross concentration, but it's more or less me making an effort to learn for the sake of learning. And Sadiq, when he reveals teachings from his mouth, he gets to you teachings which you need to hear exactly right now. You come out saying, oh my God, that's exactly what I need to hear. How did he read my mind? I don't believe this and this and that. That is the tzaddik giving them the rain. The rain lets, the, the clouds let out the rain to each land commensurate to what it needs. So too, when hearing from the mouth of tzaddikim, they have the ability to let you hear exactly what you need. You can have 25 people or 25,000 people in a room, and this tzaddik is saying certain words. But he's saying it in a format that each person hears exactly what they need to hear. And the other guy doesn't hear it the way he does. Don't give to me, oh, but he, he has this perspective, he has this hashkafa. They heard the same words, but each person gets this different inspiration. They're aroused, and they each feel, oh my, he got to me, I don't believe it. And they, each one got them in a different, uh, different perspective. That's like the clouds letting out the rain in different vegetation. This land needs, the apricot trees need more rain than the tomatoes. The tomatoes need more than the cucumbers and the bananas and this and that. The dates hardly need any that much rain. They can go on a desert land, whatever. So that is the, each person, how the tzaddik is able to get to him and to get to that person. This is why it's important to get these tzaddikim to unblock their clouds, which are due to the recipients, not receiving, not, they're not receiving the honor properly, and to get these teachings to get to me to wake me up. That's why I need it. I need it. So, so my Torah shouldn't be a dry Torah. That okay, it's my it's my daily schedule, my my my, my daily <coughs> regime. I have I have my biking exercise every day, and I have my my daf yomi class every day. It, it won't be dry anymore. It'll be, I'm, in, I'm I'm infused to come closer to Hashem, which, like we said, is expressed in the davening. That the davening changes. That you're davening with your bones. I not like again. It's, it's a dry regime. Your people they get up every morning. They go to shul every morning. They go to the other mincha. They do brikat hamazon. They do the brikat hashachar. It becomes dry. But how can I do it that I can daven with my bones? This is the secret that I hear teachings that literally get to me. They inspire me. They go shmua tova to dashen etzem. The good news will make fat satiated. The bones, so now I can dive with my bones, and my bones have been waking them up. I'm not just a walking skeleton anymore, I'm a live skeleton now. I'm able to put the bones into the words of prayer, like we say Shabbat morning. Fine. This was an introduction to explain now, now we can understand the whole problem of Rabbi Akiva and his 24,000 students. That there was a blemish. Why are we taught that they were, they were, they were killed in a plague, they died in a plague? Because they didn't respect each other. There was a lack of kavod. <coughs> and we said that the kavod is the source of the soul. Well, let's look a bit deeper at this idea. Why in the world would the students of Rabbi Akiva not respect each other? Why, why, what, what could be the reasoning behind that? We can understand it, but we'll, we'll just go a deeper a little. When each one holds that my perspective is greater than yours, your perspective is wrong, my perspective is right, so this will cause that there is a lack of respect between each other. There's no kavod. Because if the one, the, this one feels your respect is not the real respect, I received the real respect. That, that was the blemish basically. Because if now they respected each other, so the kavod would be complete. And if the kavod would be complete, so their teacher, Rabbi Akiva, would not have, because now by respecting each other, so altogether they would take this respect and respect Rabbi Akiva. To explain, the question is, where was Rabbi Akiva? He let 24,000 of his students die. Where was he? How could he let this happen? 
Don't give this to me that Rabbi Akiva is one, ent one entity and his students are a separate entity. We call them Talmidei Rabbi Akiva. That means they're his students, just like it's an attachment. It's one with, 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 without the other. You can't have one without the other. Rabbi Akiva, the Talmida. They're called Talmidei Rabbi Akiva. Not just called 24,000 students. They're called 24,000 students of Rabbi Akiva. So where was Rabbi Akiva in the picture? How come he didn't save his, his disciples? Why didn't he go out and... Why did he do anything? We hear this story. We're mourning over the 24,000 students of Rabbi Akiva. Where was Rabbi Akiva? He sold great Rabbi Akiva. Where was he in the picture? How come he couldn't save them? So, the lack of respect for each other caused that there was a lack of kavod. And they couldn't, each one, by blemishing the honor, they themselves did not have the ability of honoring. There was a lack of honor. And by there being a lack of honor, they could not honor Rabbi Akiva properly, these 24,000 students, to the extent that Rabbi Akiva's cloud blocking his wisdom. To explain, when we say, what says in the Gemara, that an elder forgets his Torah, his Torah study, so it's not just because he got, the pshat is, the simple meaning is he got old, and because of the oldness, he can't see clearly. We're going a step further. We're saying even a young Torah scholar, a young tzaddik, he can have, he can be influenced by his students that he can't give to them the teachings to wake them up. Do because of a lack of respect, lack, lack of cover coming. So there, for, there, come, there comes formed a cloud and the cloud is, is staying cold. There's no heat, there's no new vapors coming up to crack open the cloud to reveal the rain, to reveal the wisdom. So Rabbi Akiva, he couldn't help his students because there was no kavod. There was no kavod. And because when, when, there, when there's a lack of kavod, so like we said, the nefesh becomes drained because it becomes a distancing between the honor and the soul. So this separation cause after, can cause afterwards a death of the soul. And now, because the, the, the soul, the, the honor has to always be connected to the soul. There's a rule. A soul cannot, we said if a soul is rooted in honor, so they can, it cannot exist that a soul is not is, is totally cut off from honor. It can't be. So when we say that a person's soul is becoming distance from honor, it means that the honor is leaving, leaving, and the soul can't stay no longer in this physical body because its root is leaving. The honor is, is disappearing. It's, it's running away. So the the, the the heaviness and the tiredness generated is the soul departing from the body to go back to its kavod. And this is what happened to the students of Rabbi Akiva because there was no kavod. So automatically the soul became tired and drained. There was no service of Hashem. Rabbi Akiva couldn't help because there was no honor here. They, they couldn't honor Rabbi Akiva to tear, tear open the cloud blocking Rabbi Akiva's wisdom to, to reveal teachings that can save them. And as a result, there was a, there was a, a death of the 24,000 students. And then the end rectification of Rabbi Akiva, believe it or not, of this was his own death. To explain, this part is a bit scary, but this might give a bigger picture, a clearer picture of Rabbi Kiva's death to rectify the tone, the 24,000. We say Lag Ba'omer, Rabbi Shema Bar Yochai, his passing on Lag Ba'omer signifies the ending of the passing of the students. But to end the final rectification, it was through Rabbi Akiva's passing himself beforehand that completed it. Rabbi, Rabbi Shema Bar Yochai afterwards, on that day, the students stopped. By the way, the students passing away, 24,000, happened much more earlier in, in history before the passing of Rabbi Shimon Bar Yochai. Rabbi Shimon Bar Yochai was one of the younger students of Rabbi Akiva. Then after the 24,000 passed away, then Rabbi Akiva went to the south, he went to the Darom, it says, and he taught new students. One of them was Rabbi Shimon Bar Yochai. So this was after the whole story of the 24,000 being, being, being killed, being wiped out. And then came Rabbi Shimon Bar Yochai, and then his passing, because the Torah, whatever Hashem foresaw that Rabbi Shimon Bar Yochai would pass away on this day, so they stopped to pass away even before it actually happened. They stopped on that day of Lakba Omer. But the final rectification of the students of Rabbi Akiva was through his own death. To explain, who was Rabbi Akiva? Who was he? This is unbelievable. This is the Arizal goes into this in his book called Shara Gilgulim, The Gates of Reincarnation. He explains a little bit about who Rabbi Kiva was. He came the first time, believe it or not, as Shechem, the son of Hamor. Shechem raped Dina, was really the soul of Rabbi Kiva. Yeah. Unbelievable. No way. Yeah. The other Arzal says this. This is amazing. Shechem, the son of Hamor, 
he raped, you know. And then, even though he was he because he did circumcision for the sake of marrying Dina and the Jewish people, so there was a holy spark here. Otherwise, he would never have agreed to circumcise himself and get his whole people to circumcise because of him, because he wanted to marry Dina. So there was a holy spark in Shem. When he went up to heaven, so the soul, the spark in Shem wanted rectification. So the Beit in the heavenly court, they said the only way for you to come back is if you come back in the one who killed you. Who killed Shem? Shimon. Shimon and Levi, the two brothers. Specifically, Shimon is the one who killed Shem ben Chabor. So in heaven, they told the spark of Rabbi Akiva, the future spark, your rectification is now to come back in the tribe of Shimon. The one who killed you, you have to come back into, into the one who killed you. Into the tribe, Shimon, the actual person, Shimon. So his tribe, his, his descendants, his offspring, are also a representation of who he was. In other words, all the 12, the 12 brothers, the 12 sons of Yaakov, each son, Reuven and Shimon Levi, they personified the characteristic of the tribe. Each tribe had a, had a, had a, had a, had a personality. The tribe of Binyamin, the tribe of Shimon, Levi, they had a personality which was already expressed in the Torah of the Twelve Brothers. We see, that's why the Torah makes a big story of the blessings of Yaakov to his Twelve Sons, because that will reflect the future tribes coming out of the Twelve, the twelve Sons, the Twelve Brothers, the, the, the Jewish population out of them will reflect that. We're mainly from Yehuda, and we have the Kwanin and Levi today, we're from the tribe of Levi, and we have some, a little bit, from Binyamin, but the Ten Tribes are lost. So on the other side of the Sambation, we have no idea where it is, somewhere in Asia, they say. But to go back, uh, the, the heavenly court ruled that, that the spark of Shechem ben Hamor will have to come back in the tribe of Shimon. So who did he come back as? Zimri ben Salu. Zimri ben Salu was the chief of the tribe of Shimon in the time of Moshe Rabbeinu. And he did not succeed to rectify. He fell again specifically in a sexual transgression. That, that was the blemish of Shechem also. Shechem raped. So too, Zim ben Salu had relationships with Cosby, the daughter of the king of, of Midian, right? And as a result of this, 24,000 Jews from the tribe of Shimon were killed. So again, the spark in Zim ben Salu came up to heaven again, and he asked, he wanted to, he wanted to rectify it. He said, but you ruined it, you blew it. He gave you a chance to be a leader and to bend to Moshe Rabbeinu and you, you, you blemished again, you fell. So he said, this time I'll do it. He said, but this time it's going to be hard. You're going to have to come, you're going to have to be martyred. So he said, I'm ready for this. So this is now Rabbi Akiva coming back. And again, the 24,000 students correspond to the 24,000 who were killed in the plague at the time of Shimon, at the time of Zimri ben Salu, the story of Pinchas and, and Cosby. So he came back a third time, and at his death, that's when was the final rectification of these 24,000 students, basically. That's what they were, really. The 24,000 students were par paralleling the 24,000 from the tribe of Shimon who fell. They fell, they, they, they didn't seek to rectify because of the lack of honor. Because honor, really, when we say honor, it's the opposite of cherpa. When you say honor, kavod, it's the opposite of cherpa. Cherpa, which means an, a blasphemy, an insult, a shame. What is the main cherpa? What Shimon and Levi, the brothers, told the people of Shechem. They said, we cannot marry into a family that's not circumcised. Ki cherpa hilanu. The word they used is because this is a disgrace to us. A disgrace. And they call cherpa to a blemish of the covenant. Someone who's uncircumcised connotes that this person doesn't have moral purity, personal purity. Fine. <laughs> So the cherpa and the kavod are, are two opposites. And the students of Rabbi Akiva, by not honoring each other, this blemish of kavod is equal to the cherpa, which is the blemish of the covenant, which means that they fell in again. It wasn't rectified, the damage caused at the time of Zimri with Cosby. Finally, it was rectified totally at Rabbi Akiva's painful death, that he was scraped in such a terrible way. His skin was peeled with metal combs. This rectified all three reincarnations to me. But with that, that's deep. But it shows that it's, there's, a, there's a whole picture here. We have, when we read the story, we get hurt. You know, how could it be? His skin was, you know, it's, it hurts, it's painful. But when you see it's only, it's part of the film. There's a film, and you're, you're shown 
like uh, one minute for, uh, at point 22 minutes of the film. You don't see the beginning and the end, you see only one part. You have to see the whole movie in order to understand the whole picture of, of Rabbi Akiva. But in short, this is the whole picture of this idea. What comes out of this lesson is kavod, due to tzaddikim. And in this context, so we said that it's a teaching, a study, where you feel that the author of the teachings is talk, talking directly to you, is an indication that there is an honor, which is, which is tearing apart the, the, the cloud, blocking the wisdom. And this can apply, believe it or not, even after tzaddikim pass away. By honoring tzaddikim, which is reflected by learning their teachings, as opposed to opposing them, and eh, I don't need to hear this, it's not for me, we, we, we don't know this type of things, and this, and to talk, uh, by, by respecting and also traveling to tzaddikim, traveling to even gravesites of tzaddikim, all this honor generated by not, not opposing, but respecting, opens up the gates of the tzaddikim, even in their books, after they've passed away, so that the teachings talk directly to, you, to, to me. That the, the, the clouds are opened, and the thunder comes and reveals the wisdom of the teaching, of the, of the tzaddikim. But the, so this was deep stuff. It's a, to apply it on a practical level. It basically starts with this tzedakah, this simple tzedakah, at the words in the davening in the morning, and to give, like the Ben Chai says, those three coins, to give those coins, that already begins the kavod process of being restored, which is to work on these items and have the clouds disappear. All right. Yes, yes. When, when we talk about tikkunim and like um, you know fixing something that your prior soul did, let's say many years ago. Uh, right, yeah, rectification. Rectification. Right. Yeah. Right. Why is that? Like why? You know, basically, nobody knows. You don't feel that you're rectifying anything. You're not given a preview of what you've done. You're not given any sort of indication that that you know you're doing some sort of tikkun. And so, to me, in my mind, um, you're about to fail again and again. I feel like whatever we're all doing here, nobody knows what we're doing prior lives. And whatever challenges everybody has, I'm sure we must be connected to some sort of rectification. But I feel like in the system. How is it possible for a person to uh, actually succeed? Excellent. I was asked this question also last week. The Ben Ishchai, I like quoting the Ben Ishchai because he brings these things up a lot. He quotes Rav Chaim Bital, the student of the Arizal, who says, how could you know what you were sent back to in order to rectify? How could you get an indication to know? You look in life what is the most difficult areas. Some person has a difficulty of eating. Some has a difficulty with, uh, with, uh, with, uh, with money issues, with sexual issues, another person with Lashon Hara, with honor issues, Kavod. You see in your life, by doing what's called Hidbodidut, your personal davening, you take, a, a, you take an x-ray, uh, you, you, you take a, ma a, what's it called, a magnifying glass, a microscope, and begin to look at yourself the areas in life which are difficult for you. You have some people, it's very easy for them to get up in the morning. Other people, it's a killer. <laughs> they can't get up in the morning like a, like a stone. So this is an indication that they were sent back to work on this point. That's the point you have to work on. And the person has a big test on anger. Another guy, you can scream at him, insult him, he doesn't know he's very nice to you, he's very this, that. Other one, I want to kill you. I want to kill you. <laughs> right? So this indication that you were sent back to work on the anger. Murder on the on the bloodthirstiness on each person on what's difficult. This is Rav Chaim Vital says, quoting the Arizal. This is your indicator of what you were sent back to work on. The problem is when a person looks honestly at themselves, they have to work on everything. <laughs> I'm not just on one item, on two items. I have four four hundred items to work on in my life. I don't know where to begin. So it just shows the severity of a situation and to begin wherever you can. But again, there's levels. There's levels. There are certain, I have to, try to work on, on many things, on everything, but there are certain things which stick out. There's one person, again, he has the difficulty of eating. The eating is a killer for him. He can't eat in holiness and kiddusha. He just it indulges, God forbid. Another person, he has the problem of the honor problem, the, the kavod. He can't bend himself to other people. He has to always give a fight, an argument on every time you think. You're sitting in my seat. Get out of here. This and all these type of things, right? So there are certain things in your life that are more than other ones. So that is an indicator that this item has to be worked on priority. Priority to work on that. 
That is an indication of the tarot, of the rectification. What we have to work on, what we have to look for to, to work on. What's difficult more, what's really difficult. Then wouldn't God have to give you um, like an extra boost, like an extra help to, because you can't, meaning it's almost like unless he gives you some sort of extra tool, you're beautiful. not going to succeed. Ah, beautiful. We spoke about that last week also, that this is an idea of getting a new soul, a recharge. We said last week that when kavod comes to a person, it can come for one of two things, or to take away a person's soul, God forbid, that the time has come or to give a person a new soul, like a, a pregnant mother carrying inside a child. So the kavod is like a mother. The kavod is called mother of all living, chava, Eve, chava. She's called em kol chai, and she contains within her an offspring, which is a new soul. So in our struggle to come close to Hashem, our struggle to survive, our struggle to rectify, like we spoke today also in the, in the perspective of Davani, the soul gets dried out and drained and I need superhuman power in order to get across and do what has to be done in life. So Hashem sends the person a test of honor. When honor is sent a person's way, and the, word, the, the honor can be many facets. It's, uh, an example is that you feel Hashem just gave you an up in life, things are just working great, Mon money is okay, my health is okay, all of a sudden you see Hashem is honoring you, be careful. Yeah. Be careful, could be Hashem a sign. That if now you're after the honor and not what it comes to give you, it could be coming to take away your soul. In other words, all the accomplishment, all the good things that you were given, the honor being revealed to you, and you're just, wow, I'm, you know, things are just great, and you're looking at the honor as opposed to why it's coming, it can come to, be to take away what was given to you. But in the main, Rabbi Nachman teaches in this lesson, lesson 67, which is what, where, where, where everything we spoke about tonight is from lesson 67 of the Kutimuran. He says there, in the main, the good has the upper hand. And in the main, when Hashem sends honor to a person, it's to give him a new soul. What does it mean to give him a new soul? You have your soul, but to get a boost, an energizer boost, to be re-infused with a strength to start serving Hashem again, and to start working what has to be done, this is what's called a nefesh chadash. We spoke about it last week, this happens every week on Shabbat. On every Shabbat, we get what's called the Nishama Yatera, an extra additional soul. They don't take away the soul, they add to it, they give you an additional soul. Our goal is now during the week to draw the light of Shabbat into the week that we can always be getting on a daily basis a new soul always in order to get done what we have to rectify. The rectification it seems to be difficult because I'm drained, my nefesh is drained because it's being distanced from the honor. So there are times when honor is revealed, like we spoke about an example is the tzedakah concept of the tzedakah of, of the daven and v'atam Moshe Bakol. This reactivates the kavod. So I'm, giving another, I'm given another chance of kavod, honor being revealed to me, for the sake of giving me this boost of the new soul. But the trick is, am I going to get fooled by the honor, or am I going to get what it has to, to give, to explain better, to explain better. The guy, who's, uh, the guy in the circus who's, who's, the, who's the, walking on the tightrope, he's walking on the rope, and he's holding the stick, right? Mm -hmm. And the audience is clapping and honoring him. Wow! If he for one second looks at the audience, he's going to fall, mm -hmm. right? If he gets carried away from the honor, that they're honoring him, if he thinks one second about the honor, mm -hmm. so he's going to lose it, he's going to fall off the rope. Mm -hmm. But so. now he's doing it, the honor is pushing him to make sure to do the job right, he's focusing mm -hmm. on what he's doing, and the honor is, what, 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 why in the first place is he doing the tight walking? Because he, he wants to connect to the honor to generate from it. He wants the, the feeling of the accomplishment. But if he, if he gets sidetracked, this is like a physical example, Avdi. If he gets sidetracked from the honor, he'll fall off the tight rope, right? So too, when honor comes a, 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 to a person, it's a trick. It's now, I have to see what, what like, like the mother carrying the, the, the embryo, the child within. I have to look what the, what the honor is bringing to me and not to get carried away from the honor. Rav Nosen gives an amazing example of this. I believe we spoke about it last week. But the example of the mitzvah of Shiloh HaKen. The mitzvah of Shiloh HaKen is when you see a nest, right? A, a, a nest of a bird and chicks or eggs in a place which is hefker, like a public, a public, a, or like a public tree, whatever. So you have a mitzvah to make, you, can, you, you distance the, the mother bird and you can take the chicks, you can take the, the, yeah, the, 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 the eggs. Yeah. 
So in our context, shalach teshalach etaem, distance the mother, the mother. In other words, the honor coming to you, don't pay attention to the honor, distance the honor, and then you can take the souls. You can take the chicks, you can take the eggs, which is the idea of the soul. In other words, the, the honor coming to you is to give you something else. But the test is, are you going to get sidetracked by the honor? And that, that, that's a danger, because you, you risk losing by, or if you're in a rut, your, your soul is, is drained, you risk staying like that again. You lose, you, they gave you an opportunity, and you got sidetracked by the honor, so you lost getting the re-energizing. The, the re or God forbid the opposite, they see that you're just too unworthy, too getting carried away of honor, they're setting the honor to take away your soul, chas or physically the person dies, or the accomplishments that he has already, even though he's drained, but he has something, even that little something is, God forbid, taken away also. So the trick of honor is to receive the honor of holiness, which means for the sake of Hashem. When the honor comes to me, like it says by the, shlo, the Mitzvah Shiluach HaKen, Shalach Teshalach, send the mother back to Hashem. Send the honor coming to you, Hashem, the honor is for you. I, I'm not interested in the honor, I'm interested in what you want to give to me. It comes dressed in honor, Eman Asot. The way that Hashem sends the, the new soul is in the, the garment of honor. But that's your trick, that's the, that's, the, that's the test. To push away the honor, take what the soul, the soul that's contained within the honor, which is sent to help you, to save you. So this is a way that Hashem created life, that it's true on your own, you're not going to make it. So He sends the honor coming to you. And this again, back to what we said, when we honor the sages, and the clouds are torn open, and they reveal wisdom, so this reve revelation of wisdom, is an extension of their honor. So in a way, the words of the Torah, it's called Kvoda Torah, the honor of the Torah. The words of Torah being revealed to you from the tzaddikim is also honor. Which means, this is a step further, that people, when they hear a very inspiring class of Torah, they can get carried away in the wrong way also. When you hear a very uplifting Torah, it's like, God forbid, someone who takes a high, takes a drug to get a spirit, a high, amen, I need a high. You can also have what's called a spiritual high, and forget the purpose of the teachings. The honor of the Torah that the Tzaddikim are to is to do something, to get you to move, to get better, to get up. But some people, they're just so overwhelmed by the honorable revelation of Torah. Oh my God, what a class, and this and that. And they forget about the nefesh contained within the honor revealed. That's the trick also. What you take with it, what nefesh, what, what chicks, what eggs you take, what souls you take, with you, that you, you can d d derive benefit from it. That's also a trick. This thing about the honor and the soul appears in many areas of life. If you just take a look at it, this concept of, of they're giving you something, and it's, it's like a trick. It's a, they're playing a game on you. You have to see what's inside and not be stupid, not to be sidetracked by the external, uh, what's it called, the glare and the, and, 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 you know, the shining of the lights and everything. The, that's the dazzling effect of the, of, the, of, the, of, the, of the imagination. But look what's within it, behind it, and get that. Be smart. Don't, don't be carried away by, the, by the, the superficial, by the external expression of the honor. Yes? So, these souls, I mean, who do these souls belong to? They belong to Hashem, but I mean, are they like people? They belong, to, they belong to you, believe it or not. When a person is born, what do we say? What does the Gemara say, Nida? The Gemara says in Nida that when a child is in its mother's womb, it's taught the entire Torah. Mm -hmm. And then an angel comes and slaps him. We have this little thing here, right? Mm -hmm. We have something here, <laughs> right? We have something over here. And that indicates that we lost something. And then we're born into the world. That's the, that's the explanation why a baby cries when they're born. They're crying, not because it's painful. They're, they're crying because the angel slapped them and they forgot the whole Torah. So the soul in the child, the nefesh, is crying of what was taken away. And the mission of every child is to reconnect to that Torah. So now, these are the souls that Hashem sends a person along the, the, this, 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 this trail called life. Hashem sending back souls to you. It's your soul. It's parts, it's parts sparks of your own soul which when Hashem sees the time is ready to help you to get this boost, now we're going to give it to you. It's like, a, it's like a father who cares for his son and he prepares a special fund. That he doesn't give him all, like a father passing away and he left behind an inheritance. He doesn't want the, the boy just to, to, to squander all the money at once. 
He distributes it, I, okay, and the first five years I'm going to give you $5,000, and then another five years, another $5,000. Along the way, he spreads out, he dis dispenses the money in a proper way, so it shouldn't be squandered. So to Hashem, he gives the person his initial soul when he's born, but along the way, according to the person's deeds, Hashem says, okay, now we're ready to help you more, here's another part of your soul. This is the new soul coming to you, is basically your soul. However, like the Arizal says, there are times when a person is so trapped, so blemished, that even if they send the person parts of his soul, it won't help. He's so trapped. So there's a, this concept, which is a total gift, it's called Ibu Nefesh, that Sadiqim, they take pity on Jewish souls, especially the soul of Moshe Rabbeinu. He takes pity on people who are trapped, and he himself, Moshe Rabbeinu, so to speak, this Dar Rizal talks about this in the Kabbalah, very deep, is what's called an Ibu Nefesh, that the Tzaddik soul enters a person to give him that boost to get out. And that, that is the majority of people today. Today, even if we're given pieces of our soul, we need first this boost of the Tzaddik entering us to get us out, so that we reach a level where we're able to receive the morsels of our soul. It's like, for example, a baby, who can only eat baby food. You don't give a baby who's like a one, two, three, four, seven months, you don't give him potatoes to eat. He can't eat the potatoes. Even though it's nutrition, it's, you have to mash it and do it in a format like mashed apples and mashed bananas that the baby can eat it in morsels that are fit at his level. Right? He's not yet at the so, so we are so weak that even if from heaven they give us as constricted as possible as they can from heaven to give parts of our soul back, it's still not enough. I'm still such a baby. I can't, I can't swallow it. So we have to push a person to reach a level of maturity to be able to receive parts of his soul back. So this is what the tzaddik can do they, out of compassion because souls today are so blemished. We're, 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 we're very, very blemished. Like quoting Rabbi Nachman, he said that every Jew walking today on, on the face of the earth has already been here so many times that you've already been in every single Jewish cemetery in the world. You <laughs> walking to the other the earth has been here so many wow. times, meaning that we're, we're very lacking in rectification. We've been back again and again and again, and we need help. So Hashem, in this scenario, He sent a gift, He sent the idea of Tzadikim. He sent Tzadikim, whose mission is to help Am Yisrael. Moshe Rabbeinu again stands for Ma Shehaya Hu Sheyyeh. That which was is what will be. In other words, Moshe Rabbeinu wasn't just a character in the Bible that we read every year in the Torah, but Moshe Rabbeinu continues to be, continues to exist, and as a Jewish leader, he's still there. How is he still there? When you see people getting out of everything on the street or drugs and addictions, getting back, we attribute the merit to who? To Moshe Rabbeinu himself. Moshe Rabbeinu. It's this, this, the souls of tzaddikim entering the people who are lost, and the majority of Am Yisrael were lost souls literally today. So no one less than the caliber of Moshe Rabbeinu himself. This again, the Arizal explains all this. I'm not inventing this. It's in the teachings of the Arizal, the Kabbalah. The, most, the soul of Moshe Rabbeinu himself enters into each and every person who needs that boost to get back out. So that's why we don't attribute Oh yeah, I did tshuva five years ago. You didn't do anything. <laughs> Hashem helped you. The tzaddikim helped you. It's not you did tshuva. You have to realize the process that you were given a gift. They gave you a big light because compared to the darkness you were in, on your own would never get out. So there's a big light sent to a person to get out. This is the light of the tzaddikim entering that person to feel the light of the Torah, the light of Hashem. What people normally feel when they do tshuva, this is the light of the tzaddikim entering them until they reach a certain level, they say, okay, now you're on your own. Now we, we see, the tzaddikim said, we see that you're, you're capable of now fighting the battle, you're on your own now. And now you're ready at this point to receive parts of your nefesh again and again and again. And it's connected to the idea of the kavod, which again is associated with re-honoring the tzaddikim. Not to say, oh, I don't need this tzaddikim, it's okay. I have my Torah study sessions, I have my shul, I have my life, I'm okay. No, you need the tzaddikim. Because you're going to need it. You're going to need parts of your soul to be able to face the difficulties and tests that life pops up. Life has tests. And it may be smooth now, but what do you do 20 years from now? When you're hit with a very, you're hit with a very fatal situation, what are you going to do then? You didn't, you didn't already build up the kavod, the nefesh process, so what are you going to do now? You're not, you're not going to make it at this point. But there's a rule, there's always hope. Ancient news. And at any point in life, 
a Jew chooses to start right now and from fresh and start again, he can. And these are the beautiful Eitzah that he can give, especially this Eitzah of the Indian of the Tzedakah to activate the Kavod so that we can receive the Dat. Oh, by the way, I, I was Shabbat in Meron. So this is from Meron. This is from Rabbi Shimon. This is the light of Rabbi Shimon. Rain that comes out, if you notice, it's not hot rain. It's cold. That, that shows the warm vapors that go up is specifically to crack open the cloud. Because where, where, where's the warm, the heat that was there? It's there only to create the thunder and lightning. That's it, to split it. And then the water, which is already contained in the cloud, which is cold water, comes out. But the heat is specifically only to crack open the, the clouds and to cause the thunder and lightning. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Yeah, all the uh, yes, sons, the Rabbi Akiva, his family, his wife, you know, and uh, the Balness, and uh, when or uh, Shimon Bar Yochai, it's very young, your own spot, the Galil, I traveled north. all over Israel and praying all over, and um, so right in line with what you said tonight. So um, Hashem opened up the gates for me to be able to make my Aliyah a smooth transition. He wrote me out a huge check so that it would be easy for me to come here and to get here and be here. Huge. And you, tra you attributed clearly to the, 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 the graves itself. I know, uh, based on what we said tonight, uh, yeah, I understand. It, it just all happened. And of course, um, the huge gift uh, also besides that was the Melech HaOlam. Um, and if you don't know that story, you should go to my website, thecomtocenter.com, and read my story if you haven't read it yet. It's not rain. Huh? It's not rain. The hot the rain. It's all about the rain. So uh, if you haven't read the story, you should go to the website and read the story. It's time to read the story if you haven't read the story. So, um, so this is right in line with everything that you were saying tonight. And, and I'm living proof that this yes, happens. This works. Now, I have a desire, I think tonight I'm going to go to uh, Keva, uh, David and Melech, because, um, <clears throat> I'll tell you why, because uh, I'm also, besides the uh, vacation rentals that I have, I'm also in the financial markets. And um, I re I'm trying to remember back uh, that when we had a situation, um, I went to uh, David Amalek's Kepha and I prayed there, and Baruch Hashem, it all worked out beautifully, you know, the next day, uh, in a huge, uh, huge move. So, um, I'm in that situation again now, and I think uh, what came to my mind is that I should go back and, and pray at uh, David Amalek. And I invite anyone who wants to come with me, we should we go there tonight. Um, so, uh, oh, there he is now. <laughs> uh, so, um, so uh, what else do I want to say based on what you said tonight? Um, so, so this, so this was, this was my, this was my experience, you know, and uh, it was. Uh, uh, I, th I think that's that's what I wanted to say. You know, is that uh, you know what Red Mayor you know spoke about tonight, put into action what he spoke about, put into action, and ah, coming from the bones from the Kishkas, you know, this is also very very important about you know davening and having that you know having the. Knowledge and in every bracha is the, the matri also geshem. We've seen we've seen it. We don't want to admit it. Baruch Hashem, it happened. You know, three years we had a drought. You know, three years ago we don't have a drought today. Baruch Hashem, the rain is here. Tons of rain. They told someone told me they never saw what happened last, last week. Last week, uh, two weeks ago. With the yeah. clouds and uh, uh, non, non -stop non -stop thunder and lightning non -stop. and rain and, and wow. the, the, the streets were like rivers. Did you see the street? The roads were like rivers. It was unbelievable. Wow. Wish I had a big gift there. Oh, that night was amazing. Yeah. Night. So, uh, Hashem, uh, you know, there's uh, there's a couple of interesting things happening right now. Uh, obviously, there's a lot of things happening in the world. With the uh, with the nature, 
it was the volcanoes and the earthquakes, you know, that are happening now. And I know that there's been um, information that you know it's all related to Israel. You know that you know something happens and there's a volcano because of the relationship. That's always the case. It's Everything the case. is based on Eretz Yisrael. Yeah. Everything yeah. is based on Eretz Yisrael. There's a relationship. Something happened, mm -hmm. so there's a volcano. There's an earthquake. There's there's a drought in California because things are going on, you know, that they're doing there. And, and, and you know, these things aren't just happening haphazardly. They're, it's Hashem is uh, controlling it. Hashem is in the background. He's controlling everything that's going on. Is it you what know? we do here, or is it what outside forces do to Israel? It's, it's both. It's both, no? yeah, it's both. It's what they're doing to us and uh, against us, and, uh, and these are the replications, uh, you know, that, that are coming out. So, um, you know, these things are, you know, this is, we, we, it's, it's very clear, you know, things are happening right now. I think that uh, people, I think, are feeling uh, maybe a little desperate. You know, I want you to feel desperate. I, you, know, you said give sadaka. Very, very important to give sadaka. I've said it before, you know, I've given sadaka to people in town here that I didn't want to give any tzedakah to because for the Eight Sahara was telling me I don't want to give to this person. I don't know if he's Jewish. I don't know. I don't even know who he is. But, you know, I pushed myself to give tzedakah to the people that I, I never wanted to give tzedakah to. Right. Because just to, to break the... What does Hashem want? He wants us to go against our nature. Right. That's what he wants is for us to go against our nature. Right. Right. The things that are holding us back to break through and to go against what we would normally do. And that's what I uh, give to, give to uh, everybody here tonight. That we should, you should go against your nature because you have no idea what's on the other side. You don't know what's the other side's going to bring. And and this is what I share once. Anybody else? Yes, question. You have one question. Where does the light come from? There is what's called uh, lightning gates with connected to the light sight. And the thunder is connected to the shmir, the ears. Okay, both are connected to the heart. It's uh, the the it says shmia, tal tal uh, li. Uh, what is it going? Shmia talia be liba. The hearing, the listening. We spoke. I think we spoke about this last week, maybe. The hearing is connected to the heart. You have a person who's listening, person who hears. Hearing is very superficial. Goes in one ear, goes in the other. Listening is with the heart. My heart is connected. And now the light, the, the, the sight also, is connected to the, the heart. And to give a story about that, and then we'll see how it takes the, the, the picture. Another five minutes here, okay? <laughs> five minutes. <clears throat> there was a, 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 a Jewish uh, doctor who here in Eretz Yisrael, he, uh, he received a, a blessing from one of the Ger Rebis in Poland. And when he came to Eretz he got another blessing from the son of the of the the last of the Ger Rebbe was there. I think it was on the Beit Israel. And then this doctor, he was very excited to receive this bracha. And then he he revealed the story. He said, "Me, I was learning medicine in Berlin. This is before World War II, before the Nazis, before Germany, and everything. This that the whole start, the whole problem started. <coughs> and he was in, in the course of learning to become a doctor. You have to actually be in like surgeries and 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 to participate." So he was with the professor, and they were doing an actual surgery, and he was ex and the oh. actual surgery they're opening up, and he's explaining. He cut like this and do like that, and then he told this student, this Jewish religious uh, student, "Okay, hold the cut so I can sew it back up." So while holding it together, the professor, doctor, who was doing the surgery in front of the students in the university hospital, whatever. By accident, he stuck the needle also in the, in the student's finger. When sewing up the, oh, the no. wound, he also went into the finger of the student. Oh. And he kept quiet. Oh. He was scared that if he would go oh, like that, that he would make a mistake. The, the professor, the, 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 the teacher who was doing the surgery, Ooh. would make a mistake. So he kept quiet. Yeah. And after it was sealed, he said, okay, let's go. He said, I can't move. He said, why not? He said, you sold my finger. Oh. He said, why didn't you say anything? He said, I want you to make a mistake when, when you were doing it. He said, wow. That you're really bold and you have an amazing quality. He opened quickly it up and he, he detached his finger. And he said, I want you to become my personal student. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to push you forward faster than other people. So he did that. And a day, one day the professor said, come to my office in the, in the university. I want, I want to show you something. I want to, I, want to give, I want to give something to you. He came with the professor in the room. 
and he wrote something on a piece, piece of paper and he sealed it in an envelope, an envelope. He said, I want you to open this envelope in two weeks. You're going to see in it a list of all the patients in the hospital belonging to the university who will die and who, those who will live within two weeks and compare the reality to what I wrote, see if it's correct. After two weeks, the student, this religious doctor, he opened the letter and he couldn't believe, he was amazed. 95, 98% of the patients that the doctor wrote, the professor wrote on the page that he said will die, die. And those that he said will live, live. He said, are you a prophet? He said, I'll tell you a secret. And this is the secret for your success in becoming a successful doctor. What is it? When I look at a patient's eyes, I can see whether or not he's going to die or, or live. What do I look for? A sign of hope. If I see that the person wants to live, even if he has a very terrible sickness, I know he's going to make it. And if I look in the eye of the patient, when I come to see him, and I see that he's depressed, that it's, I can see it in the eyes, then I know that he's going to live. And that's how his accuracy was in the eyes. So this, believe it or not, is from the Gemara, from the Zohar, sorry. The Zohar says that there's like a, a line, a, a, like a type of a nerve. It's called the shulyena, the aina, the, the, the nerve of the eye, the special line, is connected to the heart. There's a nerve directly, as opposed to what we learn in medicine and, and science and biology, that the eyes have nerves connecting to the parts of the brain. So that's how the brain sees it, the, the eyes send the messages to the brain. But the Zohar adds is a part the hope part of the heart is connected to the eyes. Unbelievable. So both the eyes and the ears are connected to the heart. So the, the sign of hope is the lightning. When the tzaddikim, going back to what we spoke about, the revelation of the teachings is the actual hearing. Because what gets to the person is the shmiya. That's why our, we say every day, Hear, O Israel, Shema Israel. Hashem Elokeinu Hashem Elokeinu You don't say, see O Israel Re'u, look Israel, see Israel Hashem is our Lord, Hashem is one We say, hear Because the goal is what gets to really the, the, the actual essence of the heart Is the hearing part The hearing part is what transforms the, the, the heart And that's what gives the hope in the heart And the eyes reflect it So the eyes, believe it or not Are like a, 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 a byproduct or a prerequisite for the hearing So the lightning comes before the thunder, to prepare, to prepare for the hearing part. The main thing is the hearing. The hearing of the thunder is the waking up part. The seeing, the seeing of the light, is to attract your attention to listen to it. To explain better, I know this is not a proper explanation, but this is a better explanation. We have two parts in our Jewish devotion. We have what's called Yirah and Ahava. Fear and love. The fear, the Yirah, is more associated with the hearing. When you really listen, sorry, the listening part, the Shema, the listening part instills with a fear of Hashem, which is the, the main expression of honor is connected more to fear. The fear generated of the fear, to fear Hashem is in order to honor Him. That you're, you're awakened to accept, expe, accept, it, accept it, and then afterwards you experience His love. But the main initial, the, the initial move is what's called fear. Rabbi Nachman explains this in Rabbi Nachman's wisdom. He says the basis for all Judaism is what's called fear of punishment. You can't begin to do things unless you, you do, uh, do this and do that, don't do that. Keep Shabbat, if you do this, you, the fear of punishment is what gets a person to, okay, I know I have to do this, and I, if I don't do it, I, I get punished. Like a child, if you, you, you teach him to do something, and he does it wrong, he does, he does the wrong thing, say, no, you're not supposed to do that, you, you punish him, you, you get him scared. And then on that, you build the person. So fear, yira, really is the base. But there's what's called ahava. Once a person has a strong base of fear, then he can easily receive a, a dosage, a revelation of love. So that afterwards, when the love, the ahava is revealed, we know the person is going to accept it properly because he already has the basis of fear. So when the tzaddikim come to reveal their teachings, there's first the lightning, which is the revelation of the love, to remind you of the honor that you gave to the tzaddikim because you love them, because you know they can help you, they want to teach you something to get you back up. So the lightning is, oh, I'm, I'm, I'm getting the call of my beloved. And then the actual hearing of the thunder is hearing the actual teachings. It's, it's like two stages. You, you first open the book, or you first go to a tzaddik, or you first turn on the MP3 tier of the class, 
and then you actually hear the words. So the initial, initial preparation is the lighting to stop whatever you're doing to pay attention. Ah, the light comes to wake me up. It's like a call of my beloved. And then the thunder is the fear dosage to actually hear and let the teachings, so listen and the teachings sink in to reactivate and rebuild the year Because the year is the main thing. This is a bit deep. Maybe next we'll go into it because we've developed the idea of giving birth to the soul and raising the soul. We spoke about getting a new soul, right? Not just a physical new child in the family and that, but also when you're given, we spoke about tonight, the new souls, there's giving birth to it, letting the kavod, which is the mother, to actually give birth, the kavod to release to you the, the, the soul by the birth, which is activated through fear. And then there's the nurturing and raising the soul that was given to you, which is true love. Children, to raise them, nurture them, they need love. You need the love. But the, the, the prerequisite is the year up, and then the ahava. Okay, but in the lightning, then the process of the tzaddik and revealing teachings, it's, it's reversed. First is the lightning, which is love, and then is the thunder, which is the fear. It's reversed. Wow.